Hello everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andre Salazar. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite comic books ever, Jimmy Corrigan, the smartest boy on earth. Let's do this. Okay everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. We're going to dive into this book. Um, this is probably... It's definitely my top five books, uh, along with uh, Watchmen, From Hell, uh, this book. I don't even know what my top five is off the top of my head, but this is definitely on the top five list. It is uh, an amazing piece of work. Uh, I read this, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago? No, more than that. Probably around 14 years ago, I picked this up. Jimmy Corrigan, The Smartest Kid on Earth. By Chris Ware, and this really changed my view of what comics could be. And I don't say that lightly. I was not, I had some knowledge of indie stuff and alt stuff, but um, this really blew me away. I mean, just right off the bat, the production of this is amazing. This great little embossed um, kind of like energy from a superhero as this Superman type character carries uh, Jimmy. It is just brilliant. If you don't know Chris Ware's stuff, definitely I say start with this book. It is, um, it's just brilliant. Let's just go through and talk about Jimmy Corrigan. He is very self-deprecating. That is uh, Chris Ware's MO throughout, I think, all his work. That's just part of what he does, and there's definitely a charm to that. Um, so if we go through all this, it's just insane, the the lettering, the content that he's just throwing in here. And it's just really, really cool uh, what he's doing here. We won't even go into here, but, you know, he has general instructions. He's really into building things and constructing stuff and instructions and manuals. And so we get some of that. And he's just laying down so much here. And this is the end pages. It's just brilliant. Um, you're also going to see these kind of diagrams a lot with Chris Ware's stuff. It is um, indicative of his kind of work and his thought process. Uh, it's these flow charts that generally are showing uh, some sort of life cycle, you know, and some sort of aging or uh, birth and relationships and all these kind of things. And this is kind of Quimbley the Mouse. Uh, looks like that is what it is or it was originally. And... Um, there's just some brilliant just design and creativity that's just in these kind of things. So this is just wonderful. And now we start off the book, and uh, we're just going to just go go to town on this. Um, you're going to notice that, that Chris Ware is brilliant at composition, and he mentions in an interview how the page composition is what he's always thinking about about how things work in the page. So we're starting off, we're flipping it already. So this is how we have to look at this book now uh, for the first few pages. And uh, he has a great style. Now I thought a lot of this inking was originally in uh, Rapidiograph, but it's brush. From what I saw, I saw a video of him doing some work and it looks like it's all brush, which it's just amazing. Uh, I can't even imagine just the way he, uh, the control he has doing this all on brush. It looks like pretty graph. It's so wonderful. And just the panel layouts again. Um, another thing you're going to see a lot in his stuff is color and how colors work. And um, I just love the way his, his use of color, how his colors are working in the book. Um, it's just really, really cool. So, um, another thing you're going to see, too, with his work is these kind of pop-out um, titles, and he'll have dialogue in here, too. He has these really great um, kind of pop-out uh, ad kind of, kind of imagery and uh, labels from, like, old-timey stuff. Really great, really great work. Um, the story is about Jimmy Corrigan going to meet his father for the first time. Um, his mother had like a one-night stand with this man. He never knew his dad. 
the, the only really problem I have with this story is just the main character, Jimmy, is so ineffectual and so emasculated and so timid uh, and reactionary and fearful that after, you know, 300 pages or whatever this is, it gets tiresome and it gets hard. And I'm not saying it should be anything different than that. Um, that's the character. That's who he is. But just reading about him is is hard sometimes because you're just like, please stop it. Um, do something, you know. So he goes, he meets his father, he takes a plane trip uh, without his mother knowing, and he's definitely a mama's boy, and he goes and meets his dad. And we're having this also at the same time, uh, we're going to have flashbacks to his grandfather's story and how that story of building the Chicago, um, the for the World Trade um the World's Fair, kind of thing like that. Look at this, just brilliant. Again, the palette, the color palette he's using is really neat. He uses this great sense of 2D and three-dimensional space. Very simple, very clean. Um, I'm so excited to meet him at Comic-Con. So I'm really excited that I'm going to get a chance to, to meet him because... Um, uh, he doesn't do conventions often, and so this will be really fun. I'll definitely, I'll get this puppy signed because um, I got history with this book specifically. And there's some um, kind of imagination type moments, you know, some fantasial uh, dreams that happen in the story as well. Uh, look at this, just beautiful page here, and this is actually this is one of those like um, like diagram uh, diorama type of of, of cutouts that you can kind of create. I mean, he builds these really neat things in the book. You know, here's the instructions to building this. And it's like the real deal. You know, this is like real instructions, what you would have to do to build this, um, this puppy. This is the stuff I was talking about before, where he interjects, you know, these, instead of putting this in a little, like, panel uh he creates this big very large um like title card almost in a film of later you know he he does this often we'll see this here's another good example of that and he'll and after supper says something and da 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 so but you know i have not seen this before in other work so for me this is new um you know, he might have cribbed this off somebody else. And clearly he is kind of going and using some of those old ads, again, like I said, and using some kind of uh, iconography and ideas from that. But I've never seen it kind of like used like this in comics. So I dig it a lot. Uh, again, using this kind of logo many times. Notice the colors are different too, right? We've got uh, here warmer colors, a little, uh, excuse me, cooler colors here, a little warmer here with the reds. Um, and so each scene kind of like just comes into another palette. Uh, really cool. Great, great imagery here. I, lo I love this here where he's imagining what his dad would be like. And he's imagining his father, um, you know, and all the different kind of versions of what that father would be like and what he would look like. And uh, It's just, this is really great, man. Um, and so he, of course, he's going to meet his father and uh, they have some little adventures. And um, it's just a brilliant, brilliant book. It is, um, I think, some of the best comic book, um, comic book stuff ever that's been made. Uh, here's some great stuff here. Oh, yeah, and he has these moments, these great moments of, like, what if happened. You know, he's, like, imagining just bashing his, his father in the head with his mug, you know, stabbing him, cutting him open. He's just having these really crazy, um, almost like dreams. And we don't know that that's a dream. I mean, when you're reading, you're like, oh, crap, is this happening? Is this real? And then you find out, okay, no, it's not. But I mean, So there's these the, kind of a surprising, shocking moments in the book that I really like. Kind of keeps it, keeps it exciting. Um, again, this is that kind of uh, life cycle, you know, drawings of now it's showing... 
these people as they come through the story in their different like cycle, right? How they're connected, how what the relationships are. Uh, just really cool stuff, man. It's it's it just says so much, you know. Um, there's notice. There's no dialogue. It's he's you, we're looking at these drawings. And understanding what the relationships are, these kind of uh, genealogical uh, diagrams, you know, family tree type things. Um, it's just really, really cool how he does this. Great. I love the, the coloring here again of this. Very simple. We kind of get the story. They're at this uh, fast food spot. Yeah, I think it's some of the best stuff. I also like the format. Uh, Chris Ware's known for really changing the format almost of every book. He's done books of just about every stinking size imaginable that can be printed or stapled or glued together, which I think is a lot of fun. And it's just uh, he doesn't care about that. He, he the, the format should fit the story. The story's... Uh, most important and so it's really cool that uh, he kind of goes with that we're not going to flip through the we're not going to go to the whole story but it's um just really great what else do we want to show you there's probably some other moments that um again and he's not another thing in this story specifically he um his thoughts are images so we're not hearing him talk about things. He's just thinking. And we see these very simplistic images. And we know, okay, that's what he's thinking about. And that's what that's what we learn. And now we're going. Now this is um, going back into that World's Fair time when his grandfather was a boy. And, um, you know, here's the boob of this drawing uh, that's here at the fair that they're kind of like uh, starting up and so we learn about the boy and the, and the great the this young boy uh, his his um, his father his struggles how similar they are to Jimmy and how they're uh, so similar and and uh, the struggles and and it's just really brilliant I love this stuff here um, Really great sense of design. Now these are wonderful pages here. I love this stuff. Um, the cream color, all these things written out here. Jimmy now in this kind of a cartoony, almost peanuts type of drawing. These are so reminiscent of those ads. You know, those little clippy ads you would get in magazines and things like that. Just love the look of this stuff. So good. And then just pops out of these. So there are these moments where it kind of instructs you on something. Or... So there's definitely a, a surrealness to it. A imaginative other world that is lurking in the psyches of these characters. And they, they think of things and they imagine things. Because Jimmy Corrigan is so, I guess, boring for the lack of a better word. Just always just um, inept you know, um, almost lethargic or, or whatever. Um, this is a great page too. So simple, dark lights coming out. He's just there and now he's gone. And we're going to move. We're going to move that. Now this is back in the past. And this bird now is back. And now he's in the, now we're back in the present. We're kind of jumping around through time using the bird as time. That was really great. Again, another of this, and these almost feel like chapter, you know, chapter five, chapter six. These kind of feel like almost chapter headings or definitely scene headings that they might have been um, originally when they were originally printed. This is great too. His dad asks him about his girlfriend, and then it just alerts this huge notice, you know, the red contrasting with the green. Uh, you know, girlfriend and the fear and the anxiety of that, you know, talking about his girlfriend, which, of course, Jimmy doesn't have a girlfriend. You kidding me? You know? I love this stuff. So good. Jimmy falls down, breaks his leg. 
He's a doofus. Now him and his dad. Dad's got to take care of him. Dad's this old guy. Uh, now we go back in time. And we see that world, what that was like. Now we go into this beautiful drawing, these beautiful architectural kind of drawings and layouts of the World Fair in Chicago. And I don't know what these buildings were called, but um, they were looked pretty darn magnificent back then. And it brought a lot of laborers into town to build it, and his father was one of them. So uh, at the same time, he's trying to deal with school and being kind of a oddball. His mother dies, his father's in mourning, you know, yada yada. Meanwhile, the grandson is dealing with his relationship with this estranged father he's never known. And his father seems to be a good guy, you know, he's a good kid, good guy. And like that McDonald's. I never noticed that, the McDonald's in the back. I love the way this is set up where backgrounds are all the same. A couple things are going on here. Um, the background, there's no ink. It's just this tone, tone shape, you know. I really like that. It's kind of a really simple way to do it. And he'll put these little like arrows sometimes to kind of help us know where to go, which is Probably not always needed, but uh, notice also he used what color? You know, he's blue, matching this. So he'll, he'll he j it's, I think it's design, really, just kind of design choices. This is one of my favorite books. And if I hope that if anything, this inspires you to go and get this book. And you know, a lot of his drawings are this kind of isometric uh, three and a quarter view. It's a lot of is like that and uh, it's just really fun looking it looks cool uh, he will do kind of a flat uh, 2d stuff but a lot of it is this kind of thing we get to we learn about a sister so stepfather or rather his father um, has a black daughter I love, these, I love these designs I just love the the way he can draw this architecture as well as uh, people Again, another pop-up creature. So you're getting all these. This is like a little village with trees and everything. Just so cool, man. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Really, I wonder if anyone's ever like went to Kinko's, copied this out, and built one of those. The boy learning about it, and as they're getting ready to build, you know, building it and exploring. He deals with some bullies, of course. And there we go. The panel layout's just great. I love just the way so tiny it's so small and it feels so much the cursive sometimes is a little tricky to read but um i don't mind it at all and i think it works because this is the flashback stuff so the flashback stuff is in that cursive um so i don't mind that at all but that's kind of another little, little decision you know he decides to do great stuff wonderful book um yeah, Jimmy Corrigan, man. This is the real deal. Yeah, I love that. Or he just like pops it out of the... Yeah. And then now they're opening. This is like opening day of the, uh, the fair. And it was massive back then. And so they're just checking out all the massive stuff and... And we're back in, um, we're, it's not present day, it's like maybe 10 years or 20 years from the present. So we see the black sister who is uh, a teenager or a young girl at this at this moment. And we see grandpa and then the father of, of Jimmy. And they're kind of showing some relationship there. And then um, there's Jimmy on the toilet, of course. Again, he's big. These have to be like title paid, like page one of the, of the issues because this was a collection actually of single issues that were printed in the magazine um yeah brilliant stuff again love the colors the blue uh you know these kind of muted primary colors of well this it's, it's orange not a yellow but it's got that kind of 
primary feel to it. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Definitely, I say, get your hands on this. Um, I can't say enough amazing things about it. It is probably, no, it, it's definitely, just, it's one of the best books ever. It's just so good. Um, it is depressing. There is some moments where you're just like, oh my gosh, really? But uh, that's Chris Ware. I mean, that's just like all his stuff is very focused on being a collector, being kind of isolated, you know, being a mama's boy to some degree, you know, all these different things, uh, meticulous, all the, these kind of characteristics. Um, he kind of shines in that world. Um, so beautiful, beautiful book. And then, of course, more in pages full of stuff. So this is Jimmy Corrigan. It was a little quick, only 20 minutes. Um, love this book to death. Definitely go find it. I can't wait to meet him, shake his hand, and get this signed because um, it's just it's just the best. So there you go. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, you know, give me a comment on what you want me to review next. Uh, if you got some comments or thoughts about this episode or any other ones I've done, let me know. Feel free to uh, subscribe to this, share, like it, all that stuff. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.